All right, hey AP Chemistry. Now I'm doing a titration of acetic acid in here, which is a weak acid with two molar of sodium hydroxide. I'm gonna say I don't know the concentration of acetic acid, but you could use titrations to figure that out. So in my burette, I actually have it up to the zero mark to make my measurements easier. I have two molar sodium hydroxide. I took the initial pH of the acetic acid and it was two a lot higher than the initial pH reading of hydrochloric acid, which means that this is definitely a weaker acid. Higher pH means less acidic, more basic. All right, now before we do the titration, we gotta add some phenolphthalein acid base indicator. I did a couple of drops, and I'm gonna swirl that in there. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And now I'm going to drop a couple of milliliters of the sodium hydroxide and record changes in pH. I'm gonna do two at a time. So I got two milliliters, swirl, 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 swirl. Wow, two milliliters and I saw a lot of pink color. All right, I have it exactly at the two milliliter mark. Now I'm gonna quickly record the pH. Looks like the pH is 3 point, oh my, that's jumping, jumping, jumping. Right, and it keeps on going on. Uh, looks like the pH is about 3.96. All right, so 3.96 is the pH. Uh, since it jumped so much, I'm gonna do another 0.5 milliliters, all right? So I got another 0.5 milliliters in there, so that's 2.5 milliliters. And if I re quickly record the pH, pH is about 4.13, just to quickly do it, 4.13. I'm gonna add another 0.5 in there, not even looking at the bottom here, right? And the technique is better if you kind of drop slowly, slowly, but I'm trying to make the video and doing it quickly. So I have three milliliters in here now. That pH then is, looks like it's 4.23, okay? I got 4.23. Let's drop another 0.5. Actually, let's go to four milliliters. I got four milliliters in here. Now I have four milliliters in here. And it looks like my pH is 4.41. 4.41. Kind of hanging on to a constant pH. There's a reason for that. All right, I'm gonna drop another milliliter. I got to five milliliters. Got a dark color. I got five milliliters. And my pH is looking like 4.57. All right, I'll just wait for it to stop. So 4.57, kind of a steady pH here. All right, we're gonna call this the buffer region later. I'm gonna drop another milliliter in there. I got six milliliters, and my pH is about 4.83, 4.83. Got a steady climb here. Another milliliter, got seven milliliters in here. Woof, and the pink, you could see it in the video underneath the white that it's getting broader and broader. We got 5.06, 5.06, after dropping up until seven milliliters. Let me do another 0.5, actually. I got 7.5, it was getting darker, right? Once you notice that big pink color coming around, that means you're getting very close to your end point. I got 5.28 is my pH, I got a, slutty, a steady increase. 5.28, and I got 7.5 milliliters approximately. And there's two decimal places for the burette, so I've been recording them at 7.50. Let's do another 0.5, let's go to eight milliliters. Oof, eight, look at that pink, it's getting really dark. Okay, taking a pH, I got 5. 5.47, 5.47 is my pH, and I have eight milliliters in there. Okay, 
I'm gonna drop another 0.5. Actually, I drop a milliliter. I dropped milliliter, so I got nine in here now. Ooh, and I went way past the end point. I'm at nine milliliters. Nine milliliters is way too much for that. Oh, actually, no, it's going away. Swirl, swirl, swirl. That's why you swirl. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I didn't do that before. Adding a little bit of water. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Not as dark as the other one. Taking the pH, and I've climbed to about, look, and the faint, the color's kind of disappearing a little bit after swirling a little bit more. But now I have a pH of about, let's see, it's slowly increasing. And the color's going away. I got a pH of about 7.5. Oh, eight. Oh, oh, oh. And the color is fading even more. All right, so there's some equilibrium reaction happening in here where the base is reacting and it's going back and forth and I'm making acid, using up acid, making acid, using up acid, and the color is fading. That's a nice pink color. I don't know if you can see it in the video. All right, and now my pH is at about 8.05. 8.05 after nine milliliters. I did jump a bit. Right, the faint, now it's faint pink a little bit more. Let's add maybe up to 9.5. All right, I got a dark color. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Now I'm definitely past the end point. All right, do, 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 do. pH is about, oh, we jumped way high. Now we're at 11. And the, the readings are very finicky. It doesn't read it automatically. It, stack, it keeps on moving. That's why there's like a lag and, and a dead air time sometimes because I'm waiting for the measurement. Um, so I got 12.08 is my pH. So it jumped way up there. So 12.08 after having dropped 9.5 milliliters, 9.50 milliliters. I'm gonna add an, up until 10 now. I'm gonna record measurements beyond the dark pink, all right, I got 10 milliliters in there, and my pH is about 12.33, 12.33, and I got 10 milliliters. I'm going to add another milliliter in there, now I'm at like 11 milliliters, and my pH should be higher. I got 12 point, let's see what we got. And again, it's a bit finicky, but this is way past the end point. There's a lot going on there, 12.59. You wanna record the pH after the end point so you get like the rest of your curve. You don't wanna have the curve just automatically stop. You wanna see where the curve could keep on going so you could find kind of like a midpoint. I'm gonna do another two or three milliliters. So first let's do 12. I'm at 12 milliliters. And my pH, very finicky. Again, pH is about 12.58. So we're kind of getting flat now. pH isn't changing. 12.58. Let's do maybe one or two more. I'm gonna go to 13. Swirl, 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 swirl. pH is about 12.72. And that's after adding 13 milliliters. Let's go to 14, see if the pH changes anymore. We're at about 14 milliliters. Record that pH. We got about 12.8. All right, so it's getting, still staying kind of flat. 14 milliliters. Let's do one more. 15. By the way, this is way past the end point, but we're still getting this data. That means all of the acid's gone by now. If there was still acid in there, it'd be a bit colorless like this, but there's no acid in here. I have all base. And how do I know that I have mostly or all base? The pH is really high. PH is greater than seven, so I have, it's mostly basic. All right, and so now I have 12.84. So I'm gonna say 
I'm done recording measurements up to 15 milliliters, and it went to 12.84. That's right, 84. Okay, so if I wanted to plot this graph now, I'm going to move this off to the side so you can see it. I'm going to plot this graph and get that shape of the titration curve. Now remember, the pH started higher initially after, before dropping anything. Um, it was higher than my HCL, I mean. My HCL's pH was like at 0.4, which means that this acetic acid is definitely weaker than hydrochloric acid because it has a higher pH. Higher pH means less acidic, all right? So after dropping two milliliters, it went up to about a pH of four. So one up here, all right? Um, after the 2.5, it went to like 4.13. So like I added a little bit more and it went to like 4.13. And then I added a bit more. And for like a couple readings, it stayed in the four to five region. So like over here, over here, over here, all of these points kind of stayed a bit flat and you can kind of see them. Um, as soon as, and it's still kind of over here, as soon as I got to like eight and nine, it started climbing up a little bit more to a pH of five or six. So right here. Nine, I got five and then six. All right, so slowly climbing. And then after nine, it went to eight up here. And then after 9.5, it went all the way up to 12. So the shorter curve. And then after 10, it kind of stayed up here. And I have a very short curve. And I only did it up to 15 milliliters. So basically, my curve looks something like this. All right, a much shorter curve. That's because I required less sodium hydroxide. Um, and so it, it looks like my equivalence point, ooh, look at this. And this is true for a titration of a strong base with a weak acid. Looks like my equivalence point, the pH is about nine at the equivalence point. It's higher. If I titrate a strong base with a weak acid, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be basic because I have the, the strong, strong base. If I had the opposite, if I titrated a strong acid with a weak base, my pH is going to be lower. And so now that I know this is kind of like my equivalence point, I could go on down and see that it took approximately 10 milliliters of 2 molar NaOH to titrate this. I'm going to plot this graph and probably do a, another video on this data better. This is kind of like drafted. We could use this information to figure out the unknown concentration of acetic acid. Um, there's also another special region here, and I'll talk about this in another video. There was a point where I mentioned that the pH was kind of like not changing that much. This is known as the buffer region. It resists change to pH resist change to pH. And so you're going to see another video in which I talk about, um, <laughs> we're going to see another video where I talk about this graph um, and talk about what this buffer region means. So stay tuned for other videos on titration curves.